God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to wait and let a couple of people come in the room. That's some very important information that we need to talk about. Some information that's really detailed. And I want to share with a multiplicity of people as possible. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor, for coming in. We have a couple more people come in. I'm going to begin. Um, we want to use a text today to support um, what someone asked me to talk about again. So we're going to deal with it in a couple of minutes. God bless you for those who are coming in. Make sure that you like and share this video. Amen. Thank God for those who are coming in. I mean, you know what? I really thank God for you who share in the truth of the gospel with us. You know, Facebook has become popular for controversial material, and people flock to that. But when it comes to the truth of the word, um, you won't see too many people coming in for um, a true word from God. If it has to do with sexuality, if it has to do with murder, if it has to do with anything that's negative, um, the, the, the numbers are off the chain. So that means we're doing the right thing when the numbers are not off the chain. Because the Bible says um, that the road that leads to destruction is only going to be few that find the road to life. And the road that leads to destruction is broad. So there's a broader audience for negativity than there is for the truth. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, I thank God for you who have come on today. I was asked, um, Bishop, could you go back over and explain what you talked about in John, the fifth chapter? And there's some things here for you who are here today that are relative and that are going to really bless you. And if you take them and you use them in ministry, these we have a lot of stuff going on in the studio. So please don't focus on the noise. Focus on the word of God. If you take these truths and allow them to bless you, they will really help you and aid you in ministry. Am I anybody? No. Do I know everything? No. Do I know what I should know? No. But I thank God for what he has given me. So right now I want to share with you something that's critical. And I want you to see something that's pertinent as far as the gospel is concerned. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are known as the synoptic gospels. Amen. And Matthew deals with the genealogy of Jesus and his birth. Amen. Mark deals with the miracles that the man Jesus did while here on earth. Amen. Luke is not an eyewitness of the things that Jesus did, but he gives his information secondhand. And John deals with the deity of Jesus. So what I want to do is give you something right now that most churches are just not teaching. And if you are the Bible student and the person who study God's word, this is really going to aid you. It'll be in my book, which will be released in about four or five months. And that book's going to deal with these same things that we're going to deal with right now. So I'm in the book of John. Um, the fifth chapter, the gospel according to St. John. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Watch this. After the feast, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem. Watch this. I want you to consider something that most just don't think about or look at. He says, um, now there were at Jerusalem. Watch this. By the sheep market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And that's where I want to stop. But follow me now to verse 39 because Jesus is dealing with religious leaders who feel that they have the upper hand because they know the Pentateuch or the Torah or the law of Moses. And so what they do, they try to catch him in tricks often, not realizing Hebrews 10, 7, Jesus says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, and it's written to me to do thy will, O God. Let me say that again. Jesus says, I come in the volume of the book, the Bible, and it's written to me to do thy will, O God. So now follow me to John 5.39, to where it says, search the script. No, let me go to 38, 37. And the Father, in him, the Father himself, which have sent me, have borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape, didn't say his face, or seen his shape. God is the spirit. Watch verse 38. And he hath not his word abiding in you. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom ye have, him ye believe not. So they had the man Jesus right there with them, and they not, but didn't believe that he was God. Watch this. Catch this with me. 
in verse 39. I'm going to give you something that most churches are just not teaching. Pastors, bishops, apostles, you can use this in your teaching. Watch this. Verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. Listen what Jesus tells the religious leaders who think they have a vast knowledge because they have studied the law and they're educated in their own sense or in their own mind. But the Bible says the things that were hidden before time were hidden from the wise and the prudent and have now been revealed to babes. Amen. So the purpose of the gospel is to be revealed to those who believe in the Son of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the word, and its structure given to man whereby we must be saved. Catch this. Please watch this. The enemy is alive. Please forgive the noise. Now go back up to, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. If we go back up to verse, and here's what a lot of people don't even pay attention to or look at. In verse 2, he said, Now there was at Bethesda, by the sheep market, a pool, and which is called, the, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. When a lot of people preach this text, they only look at the man who was sitting at the pool for 38 years, and they focused on him and the angel coming down to trouble the water. But if you are a Bible school student and you're operating under the unction of the Holy Spirit and God is moving and working with you as a student of God's word, as the disciples were, you understand that there's mysteries that have been revealed. So within the text, before I can really talk about the man who sat at the gate, I really need to find Jesus in the opening letter written prophetically about this porch and about the sheep gate then what i have to do i have to go back to the book of nehemiah and nehemiah in the church third chapter it begins to talk about typology when it deals with the sheep gate the fish gate the inspection gate the east gate the horse gate the water gate the fountain gate um the dome gate the valley gate uh the old gate all these gates or what you deal with typology are a type of Christ in the Old Testament. That's why Jesus is able to tell the religious the religious leader, you're studying the scripture, but they, these are those that testify of me. And because you don't know who I am, yet you can have a vast knowledge of understanding without revelation. That's why I like what God says in the Paul, the Apostle Paul says in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 3, and I paraphrase, Paul says this. He says, the letter kill it, but the spirit make it alive. The reason there's so many dead folk in God's church is because they are not receiving an alive word. Because a live word is the revealed understanding of what God has hidden throughout time in mysteries. And those things now have been revealed to those by his spirit. Now watch this. I need you to understand when he mentions the seat gate, he goes back and he's basically telling the individuals who's sitting at that port porch that gate and that particular area of town is all about Jesus so when Nehemiah is dealing here with rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and restructuring things he's talking prophetically about what Jesus would do under the old covenant that man and the pool of Bethesda represents the holies of holies to where an individual had to take the right offering and the priest would take it behind the, the 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 holies of holies in order to atone for that man's sin so if we look at typology the man said there's no one to take me in in other words there's no one to receive my offering but jesus shows up on the gate ah now that gate was already in prophetic standing before the man jesus comes and meets him that's why if you go back and look at the first gate in Israel, uh, the wall right outside there, outside, this, ver this very gate is mentioned in the Sheep Gate. It was called the Sheep Gate because this was the gate in which the sheep and the lambs used 
in the sacrifice and they were brought through. See, so they were brought through this particular gate. See, and without the true understanding and, and ministers of the gospel being able to teach and look within the scope of the word of God and give revelation knowledge, a lot of people today, after the happy message, after the divine destiny, know your prophetic place, after that is over with, individuals go back home broken because there's not a sense or a need to open God's word and study for themselves. Why? Because what the pastor or the preacher gave me was good enough for me but what I teach is if you have an understanding through the Spirit of God and you have been born again you should do what Isaiah 34 16 says seek ye out the book of the Lord and read this is what he says for for none shall fail and none shall lack her mate for my mouth have commanded through Moses and my spirit has gathered through Jesus listen child of God it is critical critical God bless you sister Acevedo amazing woman of God preached yesterday. Amen. Uh, it's critical that you understand. You cannot just take the Bible and run a reference and preach a text without giving the true understanding of the interpretation. Paul said, let me show you how valuable the interpretation or rever revelation knowledge is of God's word. Paul said because of the, the abundance of revelation he, it was given him, he was given a thorn in his flesh. Child of God, it is time for us to study God's word and to seek God through his word that we may be able to teach the essence of God all throughout the Bible. If I read Isaiah, the prophetic promises of God, then I have to give you the confirmment, which Isaiah only talks about Jesus. So now I need to give you the application of confirmment. For example, John is the Baptist is put in jail. John is about to lose his head. John sends his disciples to Jesus and asks a question, are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus sends John's disciples back to him and say, listen, tell John that the blind have received their sight. Tell John that the deaf or the dumb are hearing. Tell John that the lame are walking. What was he really saying? The man Jesus, who was sent by the divine purpose of God to die for the sins of the world, his life was already written out through the word of God. In Isaiah, the 35th chapter, the Bible says that the eyes of the blind shall be opened. It says the ears of the deaf or the dumb, they shall hear. It says the lame shall walk. So what Jesus does, then he only speaks what was written in God. God's word. You can't go from out or go outside of written was written in God's word. God said if you come up any other way, you come as a thief and a robber. There are too many people robbing the people of God of knowledge that God has given to leaders so individuals will know how to reach God through his word. God bless you. We only came on for that minute just to show and share with you as we do each day. God bless you, woman of God. You did an amazing job. You are amazing. Stay where God has you. Believe for the very work's sake. Come on, daughter. That's what he told him. If you don't believe me, put your hand in my side. If that's not enough, believe me for the very work's sake. See, that she's speaking because we do that in our ministry. So she automatically knows where I'm going. Believe me for the very work's sake. The work that Jesus did happened before he arrived on the scene. It was already written. That's what the Bible said in Isaiah 53 and 10. For it pleased the Father to bruise him. He was wounded. He was bruised before he got here. Amen. Thank you, daughter, for reminding me that. That's what we do in our ministry. We teach the truth to where the people understand everything that's going on in their life. They can find value in the word of God. God bless you today for coming along for this short moment. But do this. Study everywhere in the Synoptic Gospels to where Jesus mentions or talk about something. And then go in the Old Testament and find the prophetic promise. To Israel, they were commandments and promises to us today the world there are commandment and promises god bless you be blessed in jesus name